Hi everybody. I would like to start by thanking Smart for C for organizing this forum and giving us the chance to discuss some of the key challenges and opportunities in the maritime sector today. It's always a pleasure to join these forums, even if we do so remotely. Now, I know we are going to talk about how technology is a game changer and a disruption in shipping and logistics. And I believe that is true. But I want to put this into perspective. What I want to do first is try and dispel a myth about shipping being reluctant to change, about it being a conservative industry that is afraid of new technology. Shipping has a long history of change, uh, of using technology, new technologies and new ideas. It has seen some pretty radical innovations over the years, decades and centuries. Some of the changes are so incremental, but some of these changes that have been sweeping and dramatic, but often, just like shipping itself, is largely hidden from view. Ships are by nature technological beasts, and for hundreds of years, particularly since the age of steam. They are the largest regularly built mobile structures we humans make, the engines are huge, the cargo capacity massive, as are their energy demands. Ships have been under constant development. The sailing ships led the age of the great tea clippers to the revolution of the steamships in the late 18th and early 19th century, and to the diesel engine just over 100 years ago, and so on. Electricity has discovered and harnessed for, for society around the same time and became a staple for the development of ships. Then came radio waves. Many will have heard the word of Marconi. And radio is used for safety at sea first, then increasingly a tool for communication. And then with digitalization of radio frequencies, the transfer of data. This were in time game changes happening. Sorry, these were in their time game changes happening when society as a whole took the these in, inventions and discoveries too. To some extent, the same is true now, but it is the speed of change, not the change itself, that is so remarkable. Why key merchant transit society will impact shipping hard? Ships were for centuries semi-hidden leviathans, manned by crews considered as hard and mysterious as the environment they had to deal with. They remained out of sight and out of mind. But ships being on the oceans needed the technologies to work properly and fully and to be repairable when out on the deep sea by those on board. This is the conservative nature of shipping the need for assurance of the technology or solution to work in the marine environment, not the fear of change. The 20th century saw containerization, steel hulls being welted and increased vessel power. We then saw satellites provide communication tools. Now ships were getting safer and one could be in touch with them. All of this happened in a very, very short time. Today's, ships is no today's ship is no longer remote, disconnected, and mysterious Leviathan. It is connected and understood. As I said, shipping has been evolving. Today we talk about decarbonization of our industry by the year 2050. And by the way, 2050 is as far in the future as 1994 is in our history today, a year that saw a standardized web, wide web gain global traction, a year when Sony released the PlayStation, and a year when Jeff Bezos founded Amazon, and the year that tragically the Estonian ferry sank in the Baltic Sea. To some, these events will be like yesterday, revealing how short a time we had to change, but for others, it will seem as easy challenge given how we have seen shipping a society changing over time. Now, we can argue that this technological progress has been too slow, but it was at the same time as society. But today we 
now we have a new speed. Things are changing quicker, largely thanks to communication speeds and processing power be faster and stronger. This is where we are now. It is likely being sat in a slow speed boat and suddenly throttling the engine. But like a speeding boat or a car, we need care. We need our metaphorical seat belts and we need to know how to handle things to stay safe while enjoying the ride. In the next 28 years, we need to collectively do to shipping what the web has done to our lives. We have all these digital tools that are here thanks to the increased processing power over the years. We have, however, a lot of potential tools at our disposal. The vessel performance market is vast, with digital tools able to offer insight and savings, assuming there are no other tools being used already. So this is what I want to talk about in the next few minutes. How shipping's deep-rooted dependence on technology is mission critical. How adoption of the right tools is vital as ship owners, managers, and operators increase the speed of their transition and transport chain integration, and why with shipping no longer being high over the horizon, heat trends merging in society will play a big role in our industries and impact them. Ships' deep-rooted dependence on technology is said to become mission critical, as I said before. One of the reasons we will see digitalization become an important aspect of a modern and near future shipping industry is because the people, the companies, the industries that rely on shipping are already using vast amounts of transportation and logistics data to improve their performance, report to stakeholders and make investment decisions. The shipping companies that are helping with this, who are answering the call to become integrated suppliers, are the ones that, that will gain the benefits. But shipping is largely focused effectively, safely, and cleanly getting cargoes from A to B, or providing specified services for, for specific clients. That is our purpose as an industry. And to do that, and to do it competitively, we have continuously improved the technology we have been using. But now it's happening so much faster as we have solutions that can bring shippers, car owners, and clients so much more while helping us as an industry meet our new challenges. So, which technologies? The answer is as much about digital as it is about heavy engineering solutions and fuel choices. It is about how to best implement the reiterative benefits of machine learning and data analysis about how the broadness of artificial intelligence can be honed into specific applications in shipping. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are no magic words, words with which to say with a one switch like a magician coming in and using his or her darkest secrets. This is a fast computer processing with the reiterative benefits that will need specific data to get it right. Adoption of the right tools will be critical for success across future integrated communication and supply chains. There are virtual reality tools being used in society and yes at sea to help with training and maintenance. There are artificial intelligence programs that can use the right data and get the right answers, but not just taking the data as read, but having the right capabilities written into them to be able to clean, determine, and even discard data. And this is also where we, in the shipping sector, that the supplying services and solutions to the ship owners and managers need to be accurate and aware. The tools we offer need to be well-defined and fit for purpose. They need to be able to easily and effectively connect ship owners and managers with their clients. They need to be easy to use and, of course, extremely secure. Cybersecurity is no longer an unwanted service. It is a necessity. Cyber attacks, ransomware, are all too common nowadays. These attacks are not always direct attacks. Just look at the early, earlier this month, February 2022, when European oil facilities and ports were hit by a cyber attack. The details are unclear, given the fact different companies were hit simultaneously the security gap may have been in common software provided by service provider 
or through a breach of email servers to send out malicious spam. This opportunist factor approach is not usual. I'm sorry, it's not unusual. And why in a connected web shipping needs to take continual care? But the benefits outweigh the risk by a huge factor. This is a game changer. Shipping as a service needs software as a service. It needs digitalization as a service. It needs the companies, the people it can trust, to take it on a journey where it sees the clients going, other industry going, and society going. The digital solutions do not need to sit on a ship where a bug cannot be properly resolved, unless we start training hundreds of thousands of seafarers to be software experts. It needs to be able to do it within the unique context of shipping, the remote but connected multi-billion dollar made Levadi Athens. Ships are not full, full of digital ones and zeros. They are full of valuable cargo and valuable people. We need to remember why digitalization has to be a game changer and how it can be a game changer for good. History has shown us that there have been times that technology has been developed for the sake of the technology. It is soon redundant. Digital tools, the game changing tools, are the ones that bring value to shipping, to shipping stakeholders, and to the future. And with that, I would like to end and say a big thank you.